Hi right, John, lovely to meet up with you yesterday up at the range and begin some work on your golf swing. Now, first of all, we needed to explain ball flight to you and your understanding of the flight of the golf ball uh, in relation to what you're seeing out on the range. First thing we pointed out was that the club face angle is going to dictate the starting line of the golf shot. So wherever the club face points is the general direction which the ball will begin its journey. The, club, the ball itself will then bend away from the path of the golf club. So a situation like we've got here with a red line that being the club face and the yellow line being the path, both are at right angles to one another, that would produce a perfectly straight shot. If we have the same match up of path and club face, 90 degrees but both pointed to the right, that will produce a push and the one thing we discussed yesterday because you can attack the ball from the inside without too much problem if you square that club face up with a path that's coming from the inside you're going to get a ball that starts straight and hooks left if you then think that the path of the club is going to start the ball more to the right and prevent it going left you're going to try to come more from the inside you're going to keep the club face as it is and you're going to get a bigger hook than you got on your previous shot so what we would like to see ideally for a draw and i'm just going to throw these numbers in they don't have to be exactly the same we certainly don't necessarily want you thinking about these when you're hitting shots but a nice draw would be produced by a club face that's two degrees to the right so the ball starts off slightly right and a path that's four degrees to the right so we want a club face that's open to the target but close to the path so the path is going further right than the club face that will produce a nice little draw shot for us each time so club face starts the ball off ball will bend away from the path of the golf club in regards to the swing itself we talked about a few things yesterday and the first thing when we look at it from down the target line is the club tends to get rolled very much inside here so the club gets behind your hands at that point as a result gets across the line and a little bit shut and then from there you're under plane and it's very very easy to hit a hook as you can see there are the hands coming at the last minute to try and get the club back on path and unfortunately that requires a lot of timing in order to pull off over and over again you can see there as the hands release ball starts left of your intended target line so there's a few things going on there in the backswing in regards to the plane of the swing and the shape of the swing that we'll work on in the weeks to come having said that one of the issues i had was the way you were maintaining your spine angle that was producing a very short tight looking back swing if you look at it from face on here left arm doesn't really travel a great deal and now we tend to just sort of overturn and overswing the arms in order to get the club anywhere near parallel one of the reasons for that is you maintain your spine angle for too long so if we look at charlie we're here at the top left he's got an inclination to the ground where his hips are behind or underneath his chest as you can see there is sternum is out in front of his belt buckle when viewed from the front the sternum and the belt buckle match up with one another we've got you at set up sternum and belt buckle match up with one another when viewed from down the line we can see that the sternum is out in front of the belt buckle if you will or the hips as you now go back this position here on the left so this angle here what we call forward flexion the amount that you're flexed forward towards the golf ball is maintained into your backswing so you can see there now the chest is still out in front of the hips this gets you moving off the golf ball quite a lot so you can see there now in relation to that red line that i put on originally you're going to drift off with the center of your shoulders quite a lot of movement to the right 
you're in the backswing, you just put a little line there at the side of your head. You can see how that moves off. Heads move quite a bit there, going back, because you've maintained the forward flex in the backswing. So again, if we go back to Charlie Wee, he's going to swing to the top of the backswing. He's going to maintain his inclination to the ball. So this angle here that's illustrated by the red line is the same. However, if we look at it from face on, this player has now got a situation where the sternum is behind the hips. So that player hasn't maintained his spine angle. That's allowed him to stay centred and freed up the movement of the left arm. The more centred you stay, the better you can control the path of your golf club. The more freedom you have in your left arm, the further you're going to hit the golf ball and the higher you're going to hit it. So the piece that you're missing is the standing up. We explained that in order to make the swings that you see here by the elite player, there's certain things happening. As Charlie Wee takes the club back, he's tilting to the left, he's turning his shoulders and he's standing up. Now the tilting to the left bit is easy, you can see the left shoulder working down, the turning's pretty obvious because the back's to the target. The standing up is less obvious, however when viewed from the front you get the idea where the standing up pieces here, the belt buckle and the sternum are no longer in the same position in relation to one another that they were at address. So we're doing three things and the piece you were missing was the standing up piece. So. What we got then was down on the bottom right, we can see you set up, you're going to swing to the top and stop. You can see the forward flexion has been maintained. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to step in and I'm going to add the standing up piece. And I'm going to move your sternum back, which brings you back on top of the golf ball, less of a lateral move. And in turn what you're going to see is in the next swing or two, that's me exaggerating that sort of idea of doing the Frosbury flop. So there's your high jump. From that position, you're going to do the high jump and you're going to extend. So that's the standing up piece that you were missing. We now take you back to set up. You're going to try and do this in real time yourself. There you go. Look how much more freedom you've got in that left arm now. Left arm can go all the way back. You can stay on top of the golf ball. You notice as you do that, you don't lift up because the tilting to the left is offsetting the standing up move that you're trying to make. You're then going to do this with a golf ball in front of you, forward flexion doesn't get maintained as long, much fuller, freer position at the top than you're seeing on the top right. So the first thing I want you to work on is release, quieten the hands though, we don't need to release the club face. Second thing is the idea of doing the Frosbury flop during your backswing and then the next time we get together providing that piece is in place we can start doing some work on the overall shape of your golf swing. Good luck with it and look forward to speaking again soon. Well done.